When we go from that stage, what kind of mistakes do first time home buyers typically make when they are now at that stage? So they've done all the 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 the, the beginning bits uh, and they've got all those ducks in a row and they've now found this you know dream property as it were. Um, what kind of mistakes do they then make at that particular point? You know, Zama, for me, I think sometimes as first time uh, home buyers, home buyers actually don't understand their own needs. You want to make sure. Welcome to episode 455 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandungwa Kumalo. Page this evening, I'm joined by Nundu Misumtua, uh, the founder of Idwala Property Group, talking about mistakes first time home buyers make. I think this is one of those things that we always want to be able to learn about some of the mistakes that, that I made, and the regular viewers will know all too much the, the mistake that I made when it comes to attorneys, and, and I paid quite the price for it. Um, but luckily, I think I, I had a bit of a contingency plan, but the reality is not everybody's going to have that kind of contingency plan. So we want to make sure that you at home do not make those mistakes as a first-time buyer. Nundumi, so good evening, and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Good evening, Zama, and a good it's always such a pleasure to have Thank you with you us. Thank you for having me. And, and I think, you know, when we talk about first-time home buying, before we look at the mistakes, I think how can first-time home buyers make sure holistically that they can have a good home buying experience? Because there's just so much that, uh, you know, they, they, that, that, that they can read up on, they watch the show, and it can easily feel like a bit of an information overload at some point uh, along the line. Uh, Zama, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's always such a pleasure to be in conversation with you. I think to just say, you know, for a first-time buyer to actually save him or herself from a lot of grief and many mistakes that can be done, the first and foremost important thing is to actually get yourself hooked up with a registered property practitioner, a property professional, an area specialist who knows about the area and who, who actually is an expert in the field. So before actually going into the step-by-step -step coaching, I think you have to find the right coach for the journey. And then we will go into the step-by-step, -step, obviously, as the, the show progresses. I mean, one of the key things, Nundumiso, is uh, working with people who, as you said, as you said, you want to work with the registered property practitioner. You want to work with people who know what they're doing. Um, and I think one of the key things, one of the key players that you can also work with, of course, are bond originators. Uh, I always recommend, especially first-time home buyers, that uh, work with the bond originator. There's so much work that they they cover. There's so much groundwork that they cover uh, yeah. on your behalf. Just take us through the the importance of working working um, with a bond originator or rather even the benefits of working with that because you, you can of oh, course okay. buy a property without working with one but it certainly does have its benefits for sure for sure as um, uh, in fact i was going to first start with you know a home buyer knowing exactly what they're looking for but let's jump into this uh, second part of it of finding a proper bond originator or someone who knows from a, fin a financial expert who knows what they're doing. Because it it, 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 it does not help to say, oh, I want a two million rand property in such and such a suburb, and yet you don't qualify for it or having a desire to buy a home, but you haven't done the spade work. I, I always say that a, a home buying process actually starts six months or in fact even a year before you buy a property you need to know your affordability you need you need to prepare probably i would say about six months in advance you know look at your financial situation get hooked up with the bond originator who will tell you okay these are the accounts you have you're saying you're looking for a bond this much this is how much you earn 
uh, let's look, this is what, these are the accounts you need to close. These are the accounts you need to have up to date. And when you've done this, you will qualify for such and such an amount. This is how much your bond repayments would be. And you know, all these things, these are things that you cannot really do on your own. You need to find someone who walk you through, through the steps. So firstly, look at the accounts you have. If you've got a car, you're paying credit cards, personal loans, look at your accounts, your unpaid, everything. You know, take yourself through that step. Give yourself a year or six months if that's all you're going to need because it is pointless just saying, oh, now I just want to buy a house. Everything takes preparation. So it is very, very important that, you know, you do get in touch with a bond originator or an estate agent who knows what they're doing you know, and they will definitely take you through through the process. And also, it also helps as well to know the financial implications of buying a property. Because, you know, people just say, oh, I want to buy a property. There are things like transfer costs that people don't put into consideration, bond costs, you know, all those fees that people suddenly, they get a shock. Suddenly they found this property, they're not prepared. They haven't put aside a deposit or they haven't put aside a bit of savings to, to cater for transfer costs. So as I reiterate that it is very important, first and foremost, find a property professional who will take you through the process. And then everything else starts from there. The process, it's step by step. They will tell you, you are self-employed. So this is what we're gonna need from you. Uh, your six months bank statement, your two year financials, this is how you prepare your letter of drawings, um, you know, all those things like that. Are you are you employed? We need your three months bank statements. Are you, do you do overtime? We'll need your six months. And we have to look now. Okay, you've got unpaid. Now you need to clean your act now. You see all these unpaid, they will be to your detriment. They will cost you your credit scoring. Uh, and if your credit scoring is like this, you might not get the best uh, interest rate from the bank. So let's fix this. Let's fix one, two, three, four, five. And if you fix the following things, you will get you, you know, your bond grant and at a very good rate because you are a worthy client to financial institutions. So yes, that is very, very important, Zama. I'm in conversation this evening with Nundo Misum, Tras, CEO and founder of Itwala Property Group. Looking at mistakes, first time home buyers what these mistakes are. They often cost us a lot of time, but more than anything, they cost us a lot of money. We want to make sure that you at home do not make these mistakes. Uh, some of us have unfortunately made them. And I think when we look at them, I mean, the, the, the regular viewers at home will know this one because I always share uh, the mistake that I made was that when I, you know, first bought my, uh, when I first bought property, I'd actually, I was buying two properties simultaneously and they were both bank financed. And as we now know, you need to budget for the convincing attorneys and the bond registration attorneys. And so I only knew of the transferring attorneys and not the bond registration attorneys. And so by the time, you know, when the first and the second invoice came in, I knew I was expecting it. I'd even budgeted for it. I had the money in my account. But the moment the third and a fourth invoice came in, it was a shock to my system. Um, and, it, you know, one attorney actually then <laughs> called me up and explained that this is what's happening. This, you know, these attorneys do X with this property these ones do why with this property and th this these are roles and responsibilities of the respective attorneys and it's important of course for us at home to understand that because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're a first time home buyer you've got your deposit you've got your transferring attorney uh, amount but you don't have your bond registration amount uh, because that's also a period where you don't want to take on additional credit because it could affect your affordability could affect the interest rate that you you know ultimately get and i think could even ultimately cost you the you know the, the bank guarantee at that stage because exactly because the bank will find that actually your financial situation has now changed uh when they initially ran the assessment this is where your finances were and now your finances have changed so those are some of the mistakes that we want to make sure you do not make at all at home that you're best equipped with the right insights and tools to help you along the way and no no so then when, when we then look at the the stage where you've already found uh you know the property that you want and
and suppose you've done the first viewing at that stage. You haven't signed anything yet. Uh, you've now just notified the estate agent that, listen, these, uh, I, I've, I've viewed this property and I actually am, I, I want to make an offer. When we go from that stage, what kind of mistakes do first-time home buyers typically make when they are now at that stage? So they've done all the 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 the, the beginning bits, uh, and they've got all those ducks in a row, and they've now found this you know dream property, as it were. Um, what kind of mistakes do they then make at that particular point? You know, Zama, for me, I think. Sometimes, as first time uh, home buyers, home buyers actually don't understand their own needs. You know, you find that someone is a single woman, um, you know, there are things like security that they would need to prioritize. And you find that, okay, you know, their desire to own a home, they're not looking at the location where they're buying, they're not looking at their basic needs because, you know, we we need to face it. Things like security are very much important, especially for for single women. You know, proximity to public transport. Let's say somebody does not have a car, and and they need to go to work. They need to know that okay, my needs now. I need to have access to public transport. Uh, I've got a two year two year old son or daughter. I need accessibility to preschool, crash or nursery or whatever. So you know, or maybe I'm living a busy lifestyle as a single person. Uh, I need a, a lock up and go lifestyle. So it's all those things that you find first time home buyers, they neglect. And then as they move into the property, they regret, uh oh, hang on, I didn't put this into consideration. So my, my point, my main point is that you need to understand your needs. What are your needs? What are your wants? And then you take it from there. Am, am I going to go for a freestanding property? Am I going to go for sectional title? Is it a flat? Is it a duplex? Have I got a car? What are the what's the parking? Because sometimes you find, especially sectional title flats, a property is for sale and the parking is not included. It's actually on a rental basis. It's not part of the sale. And you find uh, uh, buyers get a shock of their lives. They've purchased this property. Oh no hang on, parking is not included. You actually have to acquire parking or register for it or sign up for it from the body corporate. It's not readily available. You put on a waiting list. So it's all those things. And also consider body corporate rules. You find that it's you, your helper, your son and daughter, there's four of you. And then you go for a one and a half bedroom. And then lo and behold, you get there. They say, uh uh, the body corporate rules say, for a, a one and a half bedroom flat, uh, you're only supposed to be three occupants, then we've got a problem. So it's all those things that we really, really need to, to be advised, which is why it's so important to go with um, a professional, an area specialist. You need to know how far schools, amenities, if you don't need a car, that's perfectly fine, then you don't need to worry about things like that. And also just find out what are you looking for? Are you looking for a fixer upper? How much are you prepared to spend on the fixer upper? How much are your reserves to fix the fixer upper? Mm. Or and what are the implications thereof? So really, really, before saying you have found your dream home, you have to analyze your needs. What are your needs? So even before jumping into the car with the estate agent, I always recommend, you know, sit down, sit down with the pro property professional, tell them, okay, I am a single woman. I have a son and a daughter. These are my needs. This is where I work. Um, this is how much I would really be looking at spending on petrol. I've got two cars because sometimes you find someone has purchased a property and there's only one parking and, and the agent maybe could have, you know, there could have been an oversight. That is visitors parking, cannot be permanent parking. So before saying you found your dream home, analyze your needs. What are your needs? Because that home that you're saying is a dream home might actually be a dream visually, but according to your needs, it may not be your dream home. So for me, first and foremost, analyze your needs. Are you an entertainer? Uh, do you have pets? Are pets allowed in that complex? You know, things like that. What is it? How big is your family? Uh, you know, area, location, accessibility to amenities, all those sorts of things. So before saying you have found your dream home, it may be a dream home in appearance, 
but it may not be a dream home in terms of your need. So that is the very, very first uh, and foremost important thing. I'm in conversation with Nundu Misimtoa, CEO and founder of the Dweller Property Group, looking at mistakes that first-time home buyers make. And I think one of the key things is you want to make sure that you don't make these mistakes because uh, you unfortunately can pay quite a hefty price for it. Nundu Mis, I want us to look at... Uh, this particular mistake, and, and I've seen it, I've actually dealt with it very recently, where a first-time home buyer, you know, has seen the property, they were very excited, they, you know, they signed the offer to purchase, but then they want to pull out of the transaction uh, for whatever reason, right? Um, and, and let's suppose they meet the suspensive clauses. So this isn't one of those instances where, you know, suspensive clauses uh, aren't met, therefore the, the OTP lapses, but they actually do meet uh, all of it. And at some point, uh, relatively still early in the transaction, they want to change their minds. You know, they realize that actually this is not what I want, uh, or I've now watched the show and I realize some of the questions I should have asked that I didn't ask, uh, and, and now I'm finding myself in this difficult position. Take us through some of the mistakes that people make when it comes to the offer to purchase in particular. Um, I would say generally it's, it's not going through the offer to purchase properly. Uh, you know, there are things that are mentioned in the offer to purchase you know, that you would really need to find out from, from your, your estate agent or the property professional, especially when it comes to underestimating the cost of ownership. You know, you need to find out now. You, you've made an offer. What are the rates, rates of this property? You need to know what the rates are. You need to know the levies. You know, what I have found, uh, one of the reasons that people would want to pull out of, of, of you know, of a sale agreement, everything has been explained, but they didn't get to the point where they understood how much the levies are. And then suddenly, you know, they've got the bond, they've paid their costs, and then suddenly they're calculating now. Every month, oh my word, you mean levies are 2,000 rand? Is that how much I have to be paying every month over and above the bond? So it's very important when the, the sale agreement is being explained to you, you need to know these things. What will my rates be? How much are the levies? Uh, is there homeowners association that I would need to be paying to? You know, and and generally the, the municipal, you know, the municipal fees like your, uh, municipal utilities, just to get an idea. Obviously, people are not the same amount. Maybe before it was three people. Now you're going to be five. But it's always good to get a general idea. And also another thing, the cost of insurance. You need to know all those costs. What what will the insurance be? Alarm systems. You know, people actually neglect these small things uh, that actually come with ownership. So there is a cost to being a homeowner. And also just the general maintenance of the home. You need to be very wise. Have a look now. Okay. Okay. The yard probably it would cost me about 500 rand every month. All these things. And I think people generally pull out of sale agreements because suddenly they get the shock oh my, my bond repayments are going to be this much, my levies are going to be this much, the utilities are going to be this much. So it's all, you know, also um, in terms of things that are not disclosed as well. Uh, as you know, obviously about the PPRA, how, um, you know, the sellers are now supposed to be signing off and declaring certain things, you know, the property, okay, if there is a plumbing issue, you need to de declare such things, certain defects you need to declare. So all those things, if a, a purchaser finds out maybe on a second or third viewing that, uh oh, but I didn't see this, this wasn't declared to me. So these are all the things that actually can cost a sale, that can cost a person to say, I can't afford this, I can't afford to fix this, I can't afford to fix that. Or maybe there was a broken part of the wall that was not disclosed, maybe was hidden by a table. So it's all those small things that really, really can cost a, a first-time buyer to say, hang on, this is not what I bargained for, this is not what I budgeted for. So it's very, very important that everything is disclosed, the forms are properly filled in, this is what you're buying, and Miss, uh, Mr. or Miss, uh, Miss Purchaser, the reason we are negotiating the price uh, or discounting it by 100,000, in this area, normally properties go for 1.5 million, but this one has been put at 1.3 million because 
there are no tiles. This is broken, this is broken. Everything needs to be disclosed because just because a property has got defects, it does not mean it cannot be sold. What is important is that the defects are disclosed so that the person knows what they're buying and they know exactly what they need to fix. So um, I, I think also there's a fine line there because sometimes first time home buyers think they need to buy a perfect home. You need to, the key is to know what you are buying. The key is not to get the house in a perfect condition, but rather to get what you signed for. If you say, I signed for this house, there are no windows. Hence, I am paying such and such a price. That is what you are going to get. So I think for me, that is, it, it's a very, very important aspect that first time homeowners need to understand that, okay, Everything has been disclosed, hence I am making an offer for such and such a price because this property is in such and such a condition. If the condition obviously was not disclosed, again, that is another story now for another day where, you know, obviously there's some sort of litigation. The seller now has to say, you know, has to say, I didn't disclose this and all that, but that's a whole other process. But I think as a home, first time home buyer, you really, really need to know what am I buying? And this, I'm paying this much for what I am getting. Well, no, no, so that's we're going to leave it this evening. Not at all. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's always such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much, Zama. Thank you to all your viewers. And that is Anundu Misum Twice, CEO and founder of Idwala Property Group, wrapping up episode 455 of the Private Property Podcast with Uzamantungwa Kumalo. Well, from myself and the rest of the team, that's where we're going to leave it this evening. Do continue the conversation on our Facebook page. It has been a pleasure to be with you. I'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Until then, hoping you're staying home and staying safe. <laughs>